uh, Abdudaim Al Kahil uh, has set up a website in which he discusses this in, in detail, and he's presented a 274 PDF uh, page document. Uh, 274 page PDF document that you can download for free. It is filled with examples of things uh, turning out in the Quran to be multiples of, of seven. Now, there's so many that you can hardly credit this to coincidence. We know that uh, if you pick a number at random, for it to be a multiple of seven, it's, the chances are one out of seven. And two numbers, and, and for both of them to be multiple of seven, the chances are one out of 49. We are seeing multiple and multiple. Yesterday I mentioned uh, a, a passage of the Quran that mentions the number seven, that's uh, the verse 196 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, that uh, 196 turns out to be 7 times 7 times 4. So it's uh, 7 twice. So the chances of that is 1 out of 49. Uh, moreover, uh, 7 times 4 is 28. So we can say this is 7 times 28. And what's 28? Uh, mathematicians have the concept of what is called a, a, a perfect number. Uh, only 48 such numbers are known to mathematicians so far. 28 is one of them. Uh, so 28 has the unique uh, distinction that it is what mathematicians call a, call a perfect number, and it also is a multiple of 7. And uh, this verse, 196, which mentions the number 7, turns out to be a multiple of 7 and 28. It's a very unique number. The chance of getting that particular verse number where the 7 is mentioned is 1 out of 196. It's a very remote chance. But more than this, if we look at the first place where the Quran mentions the number seven and the last place where the Quran mentions the number seven, we see One that minute. the first mention is in the second chapter in the 29th verse, which means how many verses came before it? 28, our perfect number again. The last mention is in the 78th chapter in the, uh, in the, 20, uh, in the 12th verse. Uh, and that uh, chapter has 40 verses. So how many verses come after the last mention? Also 28, again, our perfect number. How many verses elapse between the first mention and the last mention inclusive? A number of times uh, divisible by seven coming out flush with no remainder. Now, how does all of this play out in a document like this? Is this mere chance? When we know how the Quran came to be revealed and, and documented, collected, and recited over time and transmitted in writing, we see that nobody actually planned it to come out like this except the invisible hand of God that worked on it to make sure that these coincidences uh, arrive, arise like this. And this is not mere coincidence. This is proof that there is the, the, the Quran is an inspiration from the Almighty God. What if, for example, about the Quran uh, being the word of God, as I demonstrated, that it has these numerical patterns in it, uh, things multiplying uh, to a perfect uh, multiples of seven, and the perfect number 28, which according to mathematicians is a concept. So how does that get into the Quran if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not uh, being inspired by God? This would actually answer all of your things about intellectual uh, and, uh, and spiritual seconds. Uh, reasons for believing in a prophet because now we have here the obvious signs that the, the hand of God is in this book. All right. Uh, Shabir is, has, a, has brought attention to the mathematical patterns in the Quran. I'm typing into Google mathematical patterns in the Bible and seeing what pops up. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one that says the astonishing pattern of sevens. In the Bible, since uh, Shabir appealed to the astonishing pattern of sevens, I don't know how reliable this is, but this is just what pops up to show you how easy this is. Um, so this is Genesis, the first verse of Genesis, the very first verse of Genesis. And here's the list. The number of Hebrew words in Genesis 1-1, seven. The number of letters equals 28, which is seven times four. The first three Hebrew words translated in the beginning God created have 14 letters. That's seven times two. The last four Hebrew words, the heavens and the earth, have 14 letters. That's seven times two. The fourth and fifth words have seven letters. The sixth and seventh words have le seven letters. The three key words, God, heaven, and earth, have 14 letters. That's seven times two. The number of letters in the four remaining words is also 14. That's seven times two. The shortest word in the verse is the middle word with seven letters. The Hebrew numeric value of the first, middle, and last letters is 133, which is seven times 19. There we have the number 19. The Hebrew numeric value of the first and last letters of all seven words is 1,393, which is seven times 199. But that's, the, that's uh, Genesis 1.1. What about 
the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, we have the history of Christ's birth, and he goes on with the same thing. The number of words in the seven-word passage is 161, which is 7 times 23. The number of vocabulary words is 77, which is 7 times 11. It just goes on and on. So is this good evidence? I don't see how it is, and maybe you could have it as some sort of supplementary evidence if you One didn't minute. have a lot of problems, but in Islam, you don't have that. Yeah, yeah, folks, as we come to the end, I, actually David has uh, shocked me by his approach to, to investigation. We don't investigate a matter by doing a quick uh, Google search and then right away reading off uh, what we find there as though this actually is worth something. Uh, to do a proper search, if David has, has not heard what I presented before about the, the occurrence of the number seven in the Quran and multiples thereof, uh, then uh, he should say, okay, I don't know about that, but let me go and research it. Maybe in another debate we'll come back to that question or maybe in a follow-up writing. But you don't just Google and then rattle off whatever you read there because as you know, on the web you have good and bad stuff. What he's just looked into, and actually I've looked into this uh, in, in some detail, uh, appears to me to be the work of Ivan Panin, who wrote a long time ago, but Christians have not followed up with his work, and they've actually refuted it, and they found that these patterns do not exist, that sometimes he fudged his data, he was very selective, and he even tried to rewrite his own Greek New Testament in order to make the numbers agree. So, you know, if the numbers were supposed to come out of the book, but now you have to rewrite the book to make the numbers agree, then your, your methodology is faulty. We're talking now about the method applied by uh, a uh, Abdul Daim uh, Al Kahil. His website is kahil7.com. You go to the website, download a 274 page PDF document, study that document, and then refute it, and then we'll talk. Uh, but uh, don't go Google search as though, you know, uh, this is not befitting of a scholar anyway. And we are here as two scholars. We have doctor titles, we have an academic responsibility to approach things properly.